Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Nick here, 45 Degrees Sailing, and here today we're gonna to review a quick review of the Hansa 418. Now this is the 2019 model, the Hansa 418 called Pollux. It's currently in charter with Croatia Yachting. I'll link uh, Croatia Yachting below if you want to charter this vessel. Um, really, really nice, well-equipped boat, performance sails. Let's have a look and see how she runs. The Hansa 418. Now, this is a smaller yacht than we usually charter. Uh, we got to do a week out on this doing some sail training for an owner who's just bought a new one. This yacht spec'd out really, really nice. They've put on all of the nice features like the black helm stations, uh, 12 inch BNG Zeus 3 plotter with the BNG wind gear, the autopilot bow thruster, and the new um, display down here for the uh, engine control. Um, really nice stuff. This does not have electric winches, but as you can see by these two winches, you have standard and primaries, uh, sorry, primaries and secondaries. Those secondary winches are for the Jenica, which this, uh, this model flies very, very well. We didn't get to fly it this week, but I'm looking forward to doing that in the upcoming, either the Hansa Cup or sometime we're gonna fly the Jenica on this boat because I really enjoyed sailing it. Um, under motor. We found the yacht under motor to be a little bit, I was going to say a little bit slow. And then on this last day, I actually motored back when I was motoring towards the marina, I pushed it a little bit harder, thinking that uh, usually that's too high. When I've been cruising at around 2100, 2000 RPM, we've been getting like five knots, five and a half. So I felt like, okay, this is a five and a half knot boat. It's a lighter boat, smaller engine, and not that quick but I pushed it up to two and a half thousand for 20 minutes out there and we got we got that sort of six six point one so it's not a heavy boat that's going to punch through a lot of swell under motor and it is slower under motor but it did sail we sailed from here in Karstella um, all the way to Vis one day so 30 miles uh, we had great wind the whole way and we were doing speeds of seven to eight eight and a half knots the whole way it was brilliant. Um, the performance sails, this is the first time I've used the performance sails on the 418 or a, a smaller model like this, and they make a decent amount of difference. So it has the Elvstrom performance sails with a lazy bag and a slab reefed main. Now, single line reefing on this boat made it really easy to reef in and out from the first and the second reef, and of course the lazy bag worked very well, so it was easy to drop the sail. Uh, and the performance sails, they were, they were, they were quite, more responsive than I was expecting. So what we didn't have, for some reason the battens were not in the jib because that has these small vertical battens in the performance sails at the back end on the leech, uh, which make a big difference to the shape and the performance of the sail. It didn't have those in there. I'm not sure why they were not in there. Um, that would have made a difference as well. And then fully battened slab main. So really impressed with the sails, a lot of power out of them. We were doing a good seven, 7.2 knots upwind in general, when the wind was over 12 knots. Uh, and then downwind speeds today, we sailed back in 25 knots, 20, 23 knots of wind from far on a broad reach, and we're getting nine, 9.5 knots on a broad reach, really just the thing is humming along. Now with the Hansa, the deep rudder, as I've said on other yachts, the deep rudder is really good. It's got a lot of power in the helm, a lot of hold, so even on that broad reach with a little bit too much, a um, little bit too much mainsail up for our own good, it can really drive down and hold position in that. So great, great set of sails. Upgrade from the last 415 or the old model was they had the solid seats here. Um, they've gone to these liftable uh, helmsman seats with this mechanism here, which at first I couldn't figure out how to deal with, but basically this just pops in here, it's got a rub strip for it to roll down when it goes down, and then this locks to stop it falling down on you. Now as long as that's up and pushed right in, uh, you can lift up this storage locker. Here we have the shower and the control for the cockpit shower. Um, I'm sick of Hansa putting these... These are great, these are really good. They, they work good, um, this is off, <laughs> they work good, but this little thing, this hook on here, always breaks off, always breaks off. And then, 
when you put this back in, it disappears all the way in there and you can't get it out. Sort that out, please, someone. Um, bilge pump, manual bilge pump, and we've even got a cigarette lighter 12 volt out here. The Fusion extra control out in the cockpit. Those are all really nice features to have. In here under the storage, I was actually, oh, where's that be? We had a friend down here. Um, I was actually really impressed with this storage because often on the small boats you don't have anywhere to put all your fenders away. We put all eight standard black fenders into this locker. It's also got the oars, the bucket, the pump and everything in there. As long as you stack them in nicely, emergency tillers down here as well, um, they fit really, really good. So I was happy about that. There's an inspection port, I'm not going to open it, inspection port here to get through to see the steering cables. Happy with that storage container. <laughs> okay, so cockpit table. Um, one thing we missed about the cockpit table and this whole area which seems redesigned, uh, the older models had these like glove box things you could put here, the 455, 458, all of these have these like compartments to put sunscreen, cell phones, drink bottles, all this stuff. There's nowhere to put anything. There's no pockets in the bimini. There's, there's nowhere to put anything. There's nothing in this table. So that was a little bit frustrating. Um, standard table with the leafs that fold up and easy to go down. These are really nice, good workspaces. Um, this locker here, notice there's only a locker on this side. There's no locker on this side. That gives way to the space in the cabin. In this cabin, you miss out on this headroom, whereas in this cabin, you gain it. Um, on the bigger boats, I like to have the two lockers you got more lines and more things. I do miss it. It is good to have that here. Um, this is relatively shallow. Uh, doesn't want to impede too much into the um, locker, but it's got all the lines, the gas bottles and a spare anchor in here. So not bad, not bad. Uh, nice touch with the gas struts. I do like seeing these on boats these days. It's much safer for people's fingers and uh, hatches falling down. So up on the bow here, um, standard Hansa configuration really. The difference on the 418 to some of the other models is these hatches have gotten very big um, here and on the, the cabin top here on the, on the coach roof, which, which was nice, it was really nice. Uh, what I didn't like about it is all of these hatches all open this way. So for the forward cabin to get any airflow in was quite tough. Uh, usually I like it if one of these hatches at least opens forward to the wind so you can get the wind flow down when it's really hot in the summer. Um, this boat has got um, artificial teak or the um, synthetic teak uh, all around, not on the coach roof but all through the cockpit and up on the bow here. Look it's nice, the, the synthetic teak gets really quite hot. Personally I don't like it as much as the uh, natural teak but I'm always going to be like that and I was impressed that it's very easy to maintain and it, you know, it looks okay. Up on the bow we have a 16 kilo anchor and we've got 70 meters of chain. Now this anchor locker, oh, when it's little spring back, we had issues, no, not totally issues. All of this works very well. It's got the control with the chain counter on it and the light uh, that you can use. Very powerful, absolute enough power in this, though whenever you're bringing the chain in, it's just piling up and then getting up to the anchor capstan. Then you have to just clear it away, then piling up, then getting up to the anchor capstan. You have to clear it away. Uh, if you've got 40 meters of chain out, you're probably gonna have to clear it five or six times. So be aware of that when you're bringing your anchor up, otherwise it will pile up so high that it will jam the anchor capstan. Um, feature that was actually really good is these cleats are nice and big and high. Now we have thick mooring lines, no matter what the size of your boat, you're gonna get a thick mooring line. So boats that have these small, low profile cleats, they're frustrating because you can't get big mooring lines on them. This was really easy. There is no extra area and fair lead to run it through. It's just got the rub strip on the end. So we found mooring really easy on the yacht. All right. Uh, I didn't get to run the Jenica this time, but I was very interested to. And we can look at this comparing right next to it's us. This anchor bow sprit is a great improvement. It's got the two runners for two anchors, okay. But what it's got is much more solid construction and even construction. And the step is here. The hook for the extra, uh, for the block for the Jenica is central and really well supported. Now we had problems in the Hansa Cup with the 455s. 
Look, we sail, we push things, <laughs> and we bent them. We bent them a lot because I don't think the loading was square. And if you look over here on um, Twist and Shout, that is the different style. Um, and the Jenica hook there, I often bent that bracket. I often bent that bracket when really loading up the Jenica. So I would be much more, uh, I'm very interested to see how well we go with this new style bowsprit here. Downstairs, um, one thing we really noticed about this model is it feels very open. Now, we lay away to a lot of storage that we'd usually have on the bigger boats, and I think that is what gives it this big open feel. So, these aft cabins, um, as we usually say in the review, I'm six foot one, and this is the through the door. Ooh, okay. Um, and me standing up in here with the clearance, and it's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Um, as far as bunk room. Oh. Oh, these berths are very comfortable. Uh, we always prefer sleeping in these aft berths. Uh, we have found some nice forward cabins in the bigger boats, uh, and we'll get to that one in a moment, but very good space in here. And as you can see, because there's no locker outside, this here is the space you gain. Storage in here is pretty simple. Deep cubby holes here, which I can fit all of my luggage in, and a full hanging area for hanging clothes. Two cupboards up here with a lot of space as well. So this cabin I found had plenty of storage. Moving into the aft starboard side, uh, still a lot of space in here. It actually feels like more space in this first area. Same storage situation here, though here you do not have the overhead cupboards. You have a shelf instead. Um, in here, we've got the uh, 240 volt power cable here touch lamps all around and they all have the USB um, power socket in the bottom of the lamps for 12 volt power all the time. Here we lose that space we were talking about with the uh, storage uh, locker from outside, the lazarette, and a nice big open hatch here. The engine power shutoff, battery shutoff is also in this cabin. Both of these cabins have access through the side wall to the engine bay, which you're going to look at right now. Engine bay located in under here, Yanmar. Now I checked, this is a 40 horsepower model, and I was just speaking with another owner of a previous model, the 415, um, with the smaller engine. Also, they feel, definitely if you're heading up into a heavy swell, this feels underpowered. Uh, some places you're just not gonna be able to make it into that weather and into that swell uh, under engine power alone. Uh, battery is sitting up here as well. Um, the word is you can get a larger engine for this boat, 55 horsepower, though it would add a considerable amount of weight. So the galley on the 418, um, to look at, I didn't spend a lot of time doing anything in here. Uh, to look at, it feels like there is a lot of bench space in and around here. Uh, the covers for the sinks, these are dual sinks in here, which is always good to have a draining one and a full one. This little insert is always helpful for when you're sailing because of course everything can roll over. Top entry to the fridge and with a freezer box in the top. These are all normal uh, features with the side door entry down here for the fridge. This storage container here, the pull out drawer and the cutlery drawer here. Something I'm finding increasingly annoying on boats with these plastic fittings, these are all plastic and they don't hold well and when they're working they're all good but I would like to see better fittings on boats. They have upgraded these ones here from the plastic version they had which is metal. We didn't have any of these let go uh, on this trip so this is good. Large storage up here. Um, these, these hinges are always feeling flimsy. Um, it doesn't matter what boat I'm on, they always feel flimsy. So I noticed on some of the older models uh, of Hansa and of Bavaria, other boats, the older versions of these are better. They are built more solid, higher quality. Cupboards with the inserts of the cups here. And your two burner stove on this one with the slide down at the top. And oven rubbish is mounted in here. Master bathroom is through here. This is relatively spacious. They have the toilet over the shower uh, to save space here. Vanity on this side. The waste valve 
is a little bit tricky to get to on here. Both toilets have a waste tank, but this waste valve is down here, down here, and down, down there. Um, not my favorite place for a waste valve. I always found them a lot easier if you can reach them while you're sitting on the toilet when you forget. Uh, waste tank is located in here, and they have these systems here that show you the level of the tank. Now, when they're new, they work really well. In the main saloon, um, as you can see, you've got the galley in the foreground here. This is a, it's, it's an incredibly open space. It feels bright. It feels fresh. You can get lots of fresh air through this big hatch here. Uh, lots of light. And we also have the slide across, slide across blinds or slide across mosquito net. This table and the pull out section to make this into a bed, I'm really happy with. Some of these are terrible to deal with. This one's really easy. So the moment this section is inserted, we can just pull this out here. And then this just slides away. Easy. Uh, this table, we're really impressed with this table. It is a lot bigger than it looks. First of all, as Hansa always does, we have the wine storage sliding away in here. Love that. Um, and while we're on wine storage, if you don't have enough bottles in there, you can always put them down under the floor. Better temperature. And then these leaves fold out. Now that is a very big area and it is still easy to get in and around. There is enough space. I've, I've been working at this through the week with the computer. Really good, really good. And on the other side, I wasn't expecting this. This does actually reach all the way over to here. So what are we? One, two, realistically, one, two, three, four, five, five people down here. Six, you could sit six here at a push. Um, but this is a nice solid table and easy to get in and out like that. Put away. Okay, coming around to the nav station. There's something missing here for me. Usually there's a seat that folds out. On the older models they had a seat. I'm not sure if the plan is to be sitting here at the nav station, but it feels a little bit, bit strange. Uh, or if the seat just was an option they did not choose. Nav station's pretty simple. It's a desk with stuff in it as usual. Here is our um, good equipment on this boat with the BNG VHF Plus remote, wireless remote, and then the fusion system with the extra control outside. Bilge pumps, all of the normal stuff over here. Uh, we don't have electric winches on this boat, but you've got USB power here, here, and the thruster controls, lights, all the normal things. Uh, we're busto heating. This works really well as I've been using the boats a lot over the winter this past six months and we've used the Webusto heating a lot and I'm really impressed. Down here control for the shore power and the inverter is mounted under here with the house batteries under here. This is the inverter power so I've got 240 volt power to this all the time when underway and this is just another power socket water heater switch here and the shore power light that's not plugged in at the moment and for a brief overview of the electrics and what is in here let's tear this boat to pieces okay in here we have our house battery systems and the inverter in here oh sorry uh that's the charge manager and the charger for the batteries and the inverter in here everything worked Sweet. Didn't have a problem at all. Um, was quite impressed. And what I have noticed also, Croatia Yachting are putting larger Wi-Fi routers in here, which work very well. Here is your fuses for your anchor winch and thruster. I think it's the same one on this, is the this fuse in here. Lighting system here um, for the main saloon area. Now these touch systems like that they're cool and all um the previous model was much easier to use and it had a dimmer now i'm not sure if that's because they ordered it cheaper version or anything like that but this new model i don't like it at all and you still you still come in here and you bump stuff and it all turns on and <laughs> on and off um 
but it's touched to to turn the lights on and off so i i didn't like this i thought this was a bad bad one but i saw the order model for the new 2021 and it has got the one with the dimmer so we'll see what that comes out like so moving into the master cabin in the bell oh. now we were in we were in this cabin this week, my wife and I, Mahina, who's doing the filming. Thank you very much, Mahina. And we felt it was a really nice open space. Okay, it felt fresh, it felt bright. Uh, we've got the hatch up this side, the two hatches here, one with a mosquito net on it and the blackout, the other one with a roll up clip on canvas to, to put on there. One of the clips they have on it though is like a, was a little Velcro sticky thing and it just fell off just straight away it fell off. Uh, so that wasn't very good. Um, there's no storage up on the sides as far as cupboards, which we felt opened up the space and made it feel less closed in. And you still have a shelf with a lip, which we put clothes and things up on, so that worked well. Um, on this side here is the main cupboards. Uh, as you can see here, they have open cupboards here with storage above and below, cubby holes. These are really quite big, so a lot of space there. We didn't need any more space on the yacht. Now, the bed. We didn't love this bed. It's uh, the mattresses. They're not super thin, but mainly it was the... Oh, the noise. When you're moving around on this, it's so noisy. And you just get into bed or you'd roll over. And it was... It was kind of horrible. So, one of the reasons for that oh, is oh, the makeup of it. This here is moving a lot and separate to this panel here. Now, I'm pulling this apart because under here is also oh, the water tank. And you can see where the mounting comes in, it's onto the water tank. So this is support straight into the water tank mount, which isn't exactly that solid. Um, the changeover for the water is here, and then the battery house system for the bow thruster and the anchor capstan is down here. One other thing is the water pump is right there. And it's very noisy. <laughs> so when you put all that away, and you're sitting in the cabin, uh, or lying in the cabin, someone turns on the water pump, It's quite noisy because it's right under your bed. Yep. So, as long as no one's using the water in the night, it wasn't too bad. But when they turn the water on just a little bit, could you do that actually? When you turn the water on just a little bit, of course it's at a high pressure, so it's great water pressure on the boat, except it would do this. Because of course it's going, I've got pressure, I've got, I don't have enough, I've got, I don't, yeah. Anyway, so that was a little bit frustrating having that right under the bed. Uh, but water pump efficiency wise, and as far as the shower drain pumps, they were very effective. Uh, high pressure water, water system, really enjoyed that. Hot water, great. All of the water system was actually very good. So, speaking of that, into the master bathroom. Master bathroom's in here. Now, Heaps of space. I'm absolutely loving the space in here. What I'm not loving. Okay, hang on. What am I loving? Good water pump, great water pressure. Storage is fine. We don't need a lot uh, in here. Power outlet if you need it. And the uh, for the holding tank, the valve. And really easy access to the holding tank so that you can see what's going on here or see the level of it. All good things. Now. This I found a bit short. There's nowhere to hang it up in here. So when you're showering, it was a little bit short for me. Not that bad, but a little bit short. Then, these sinks, Hansa, these raised sinks above here are the most inefficient use of space in a small bathroom that I've ever seen. And this lip doesn't drain anywhere. So when you are showering and there's inevitably water to spray around here, this fills up and you've got to mop it out. But I can't get a cloth or anything down there because I can't get around this silly raised bowl. Don't like that. Next, the shower pump is here. Now, when I'm showering and I'm all wet and I want to pump out some of the water, I reach down and push this. And water runs down my arm and fills 
this area with water, which also does not drain out. There's an electrical switch here for the light. The faucet runs out of here, so if you have any leaking coming from the faucet, it fills up this area with no drain. I think that's a bit design fault. That's the Hansa 418, 2019 Hansa 418, 41.8 feet or 11.99 meters, uh, 2.07 meter draft, really nice sailing ability and great light downstairs. These big windows are awesome to be able to see out and have uh, interaction with the outside world and, this, and the water as you're sailing along. I've thoroughly enjoyed my week on the boat and I will spend more time using this yacht. Obviously there's a few points that I made, a um, couple of things that I'm not happy with regards to the design in the bathroom, the position of the water pump, and you know what, it's been a great boat to sail for the week. So I hope you've enjoyed the review. If you have any questions about the Hansa 418 or any of other boats, please comment on the channel, uh, leave your questions below, subscribe to the channel to see any more videos that we're doing, and keep an eye out because we have got a lot more coming up this year.